Memphis tonight, former residents of a children's home targeted by paedophiles are urging police to reopen an investigation into the death of a boy there in the 1970s. The group, who claim they were sexually and physically abused at Shirley Oaks in Croydon, believe that the 15-year-old's death was suspicious and he may have also been a victim of child abuse. Their call is being backed by a former Scotland Yard detective and a London MP. This special report from our Home Affairs correspondent Nick Beak does include some details you may find distressing. It seems a summer paradise, carefree days at what was Britain's biggest children's home. And when the colder nights drew in, a magical place to enjoy Christmas. From the outside looking in, you assume it was a, 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 a stunningly lovely place. You know, it was open grounds, it was a swimming pool, its own primary school and everything. But there was horrendous stories to be told about what happened behind closed doors that was there. Kind of brings back memories of her childhood, doesn't it? Just seeing those photos, innocent photos. And photos do lie, don't they? Because I remember taking photos and always happened to be happy, but that wasn't how we felt. In a small office in South London, those who were once the children of Shirley Oaks are doing the detective work themselves. Look at the way he's holding that young child. Just to think, if you go back 20 years, this is a convicted paedophile. They say the authorities have failed to uncover the full extent of abuse there. Abuse buried for decades. All my life, um, all my life it's been at the back of my head. Every day I think of it, even now. Les kept his abuse secret for 50 years. He would sexually abuse me on a regular, on a regular basis. And that went on until I was about 10, 11 years of age. It was hell living in that home. My childhood was just, up until then, was all about beatings and being sexually abused. Julie was abused by another man at the home. He asked me to lay down on a sort of couch, and then he abused me. She never reported it, but thinks it's not too late for justice. The truth has got to come out, hasn't it? If the perpetrators are still out there, they've got to be brought to account. They committed vile crime that destroyed lives. Other people are coming forward with their own harrowing accounts of abuse at Shirley Oaks. But there's one specific case where survivors are demanding answers. The sudden death of a boy in 1977. His name was Peter Davis, and he was 15 years old. He was found hanged in a toilet with a cord around his neck. There were signs of sexual activity, and a coroner ruled it was death by misadventure. But nearly 40 years on, his friends remained convinced there was something more sinister. We weren't even invited to his funeral. We grew up with him as, as a brother, and then at one moment he was taken away. There was no explanation, and we never felt comfortable about it. Right now, having looked through the history of Shirley Oaks and how many paedophiles were operating, it's quite clear that something untoward took place um, with Peter Davis, which has been covered up for years. The Metropolitan Police says it investigated Peter's death back in 1977 and looked at it again last year. But it told us it won't reopen the case without new witnesses or new credible evidence. They themselves have already conceded that the investigation that which was originally carried out was of its time. And that means it did not meet the standards that we would apply today. I don't think there is any reason why they shouldn't uh, look into this again. And I think they owe it to the survivors group to do so. BBC London has now discovered Peter Davis was a witness in an Old Bailey rape trial two years before he died. But when we looked for court documents from the time, we found that in 2003, they'd been made secret for 100 years. Former senior detective Clive Driscoll says by refusing to reopen the Peter Davis case, the Met is missing a chance to win back the trust of victims. I thought that was an opportunity, maybe, to put that forward to one of our murder review groups and give, give the opportunity for maybe a third, a fresh pair of eyes. They are a cracking bunch of detectives, so, so I would say that there's a great opportunity for detective work in this. Happy, I can't don't hurt me. The Shirley Oak survivors are powering their wider campaign through music. Lambeth Council, which ran the home until its closure in 1983, has apologised for very serious failings. Three were convicted after two police investigations into alleged abuse in South London, and there's now another one. But, after all these years, survivors say only they can reveal the true story of Shirley Oaks. 
Nick Beek, BBC London News.